welcome to the Whiskey Vault. No, you just totally missed, missed up the thing. Oh, I was setting you up. Welcome to the Whiskey Damn it, that's not the thing. It's one the, word. One word? One word. You're cutting these I articles? I said two. Oh, okay. I said two. Welcome! No, it's too late now. No, you no, ruined we're it. trying it again. You ruined the thing. Like, Welcome! We tried two attempts at this. You're not gonna get it again. No, no, the doesn't count as an article. Two? The? Whiskey Vault, my name is Rex. Ah! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a gift from Steven Jackson. Steven Jackson, you magnificent bastard. This is Iowa Legendary Rye from Carroll County. How, how? And then we have a little bit of surprise for when we're... How have we not tried this? Well... On the show. Because we've only just now gotten to the donation whiskey. So we, wait, I, I've had this before, but it wasn't within well, the context no, you, of no, doing this. No, you know why we've had it? Okay. Because uh, one of the founders of the distillery, yeah. he came along uh, oh. out here to our deck oh. and brought us some Iowa Legendary Rye, oh. and we drank it. All right, so was, That's it, how. was this one of the many times where I was stuck editing and you were oh. out? Hey, no, no, you were there. I was there? Yeah. I must have As learned. a matter of fact, there was a class around that. I think it was a whiskey class, and we drug a bunch of our psalms over there, Okay. and they poured for all the psalms. So this is 40% so, on the nose, but it jumps out of the glass. 100% rye. Mashed No, I'm getting some yeah. different notes. 100% rye, aged in 15-gallon barrels for at least 18 months. Okay, 15-gallon barrels for 18 months. So these are small barrels. Yeah. Small barrels. This is the fruitiest... Well, this is... I'm not getting the classic rye, spite, bl spice, no, black all licorice. Candy. Black licorice, anise note. I'm not getting that. But I am getting a tremendous amount coming out of the glass here on the nose. Yeah, I'm getting the, um, the cherry... Cough drop, kind of like what? Oh, Loudens. Loudens. The cherry cough. Loudens drop. cherry. Yeah. Yeah. The right. Cherry cough drop smell. But I'm also and getting the, a little the, bit of some type bready of, notes. Yes. Uh, you were. You say bready. I know what you mean. To me, it's a little bit kind of. I was going to say musty, but that softening of that medicinal cherry cough drop smell. That I would never guess this was a rye. No, not in a million years. On the nose. I wouldn't know what to do with it. It's very different than yeah. any rye we have ever poured. So. In, in the word is cherry, but it is that cough drop cherry smell. And I'm surprised that's 40%, because the amount of character coming out of this glass on the nose. Oh, the nose is magnificent. Yeah. Uh, cherry, even cherry blossoms, like like a flowering plant kind of sweetness. Mm-hmm. Ooh. It's friendly. Really nicely balanced. So you said a 15 gallon. Yeah, so it has this, this direction where it goes thin, swells into that sweet cherry, and then what leaves at the so, end is something different. No, no, no. What, what, that, but throughout, I have this underpinning, this undercurrent of a barrel note that isn't overbearing. But it's almost cardamom. What is cardamom? Cardamom is a spice in the cinnamon categories. <clears throat> cardamom. We need to have, you know what we should have here? A spice bucket. Yeah. That would mean like we're actually doing good jobs <laughs> on these reviews. Somewhere in here. Are you pulling out a spice bucket? No, no, I'm pulling out our nosing kit, which one of these is bourbon. Okay. And it's not gonna help for... That's not gonna help with this. Right, this but it'll have some of the similar characteristics because there's new oak and things like that. So, when you were talking about small barrels... Oh no! All my whiskey's falling over. You were talking about small barrels, and in small barrels, the, the thing you're trying to avoid is just too much oakiness. Too much wood. Right. Impacting that whiskey. They did an amazing job yeah, it's not, of babysitting those small barrels. Not overly oaked at all. Yeah, to the point where but, they feel subtle. But yes, subtle is the word you can Which is weird. You can find that oak. On the taste for me, it's actually less sweet than it is uh, a sour note. There's some sweetness there, there's a bit of honey sweetness there. Yeah. But it's um uh, it's underneath Mostly like a barrel, not bitter. Bitter's too strong of a word. Sour oakiness with the cherry cough drop. You say cherry blossoms. I don't really have a reference point for that. I really feel does. like there's a little bit of pecan in there. On the taste? Which is what I was looking for. On the taste, I would say, I would have guessed the proof to be uh, mid to high 40s. You know what though? This, oh, I wonder if a cask strength version of this. Smell that. That's the rye. Oh. Interesting. Do you think a cask strength version of this would be too intense? 
Yeah, <clears throat> because even at forty, yes, this this, this has is magnificently intense. A, a tremendous amount of character at forty percent, and that may be a result of the smaller barrels. Yeah, right. It's now not, this is it didn't it didn't present as a really strong overbearing oaky note, right. but it presented as oh damn, there's some strong flavors in here. Now there is a sort of musty note in yeah, there. Yeah, I was saying musty. You said yeah, 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 yeah. And I agree. And I'm trying to figure out what it is. Maybe leather. Yeah, behind the cherry. A little. It's way back there. Yeah. Um. You know. Anyway, what I, okay. So you know what I'm finding now? Hmm. Like a really ripe apple. Oh, okay. A really ripe after you let it sit. Yeah, oh, like, and that leads me back down the path to brown sugar. Okay. Son of a bitch, man. I, I think I found a rye I could drink. Okay, so, um... Well, that being said, it is a very different... This is not going down the path of classic rye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They sort of took a left turn. Now, their story... And by the way, this bottle was actually given to us by Heath... So we have Steve Jackson here. Yeah, he's Schneider and uh, the one of the founders. And the distiller is Whiskey Rich, is what they call him. Whiskey Rich, Rich Eggers, Richard Eggers. So this is a rep? Well, not a rep, owner. Well. He's representing the distillery. Does that make it feel better? He brought us, we need new glasses. You owner of a distillery. Wait, we need an awkward pause for the owner of Distillery, uh, I'm getting into the awkward pause. Uh, uh, so, uh, Heath. Did I meet him? Okay, that makes it more awkward. The fact that I met him and I don't remember meeting him. That's it's fine. That's two layers of awkward there. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, so this is their special reserve version. And this Oh, you son of a I know. This is bitch. exciting. You filthy freaking This what is exciting. You wanna know the story behind this? Okay, hold on. This is a funky left turn on Rye. Right? This is just all types of friendly and amazing. I know. So they, this is their new make. How are you getting these floral notes out of a rock? I'll tell you. It's a new make put into a used barrel. Oh, used barrels. And then after a year, taken out of that used barrel and put into a second used barrel. I'm going to ask you a question. Don't make just fun. Just used barrel after used barrel. I'm asking a question. Don't make fun of me because I'm very sensitive when it comes to these kinds of things. With rye, does that still have to be new new oak, or is that just a bourbon thing? Yeah, it has to be new oak. So that's not a rye. Well, because it says rye. Well, you know why? Because the name of the company is Iowa, Iowa Legendary, Legendary Rye. rye. <laughs> so they put that. Yeah. So right. this is technically because I'm loving what those used barrels. This do. is technically distilled Show from them. rye mash. Show them. I don't care. Show so them. right here. Distilled from rye mash, right. because once you put it in used barrels, you can't say rye. You have to say a whiskey distilled from a rye mash or distilled from a rye mash yeah. on the front, right? right? Notice this one didn't have that. Yeah. I am loving what the used barrels did to this. This is... Me too. Friendly and floral on the nose. And my... Oh, it's vanilla. The vanilla's exploded out of this one. Oh. <laughs> it's, so, it's noticeably lighter. Son of a bitch. Noticeably lighter in the color, but... It's so much uh, friendlier and more rounded off. And yeah. This this is a little too. Uh, you're in the small barrels. You get so much intensity of flavor. It's hard to find subtlety other than just like big notes. Yeah. This has a lot of subtlety to it. Yeah. It's it's true. These are all things turned up ten. Honey, yes. Honey and nectarine. Nectarine and yeah. then a little bit of. And I'm still getting none of the black pepper. Rye spice. Are, is, are these the same mash bill? Just when yeah. <gasps> Dude, the barrel difference. The barrel difference is amazing. It's a different whiskey. So here's what I love about this. So th this is an old, his grand, so Heath's grandmother okay. was a famous bootlegger in Carroll County. Okay. And she bootlegged 100% rye whiskey. Mm -hmm. He went to the old folks home <laughs> and got the recipe from her. Oh. And that's what Whiskey Rich is making. Whiskey Rich is distilling right. the recipe from Heath's grandmother, who was a bootlegger. That's funny. That, I think, is amazing. <laughs> uh, so between the two, yeah, um, I like what's coming out of that used barrel. Just for, just for like comfort and nuance and complexity. This, though, if I want to go on a little bit of a funky adventure, yeah. and have a strong, hard left turn into what I usually get out of a rye. That's nice. It's Drinking these makes me want to hang out with Whiskey Rich because 
I think we would agree on a lot of different flavor profiles. Did I meet him? No, no, okay. no, he, he's busy distilling. Okay, we got too fuzzy for you from the subreddit. Mm. Pretty much what is the one bottle that you have set back that only gets pulled out for those special occasions? So, th this leads me to one question for you, yeah. Rex. You've talked about how you don't really have all these fancy whiskeys and just whiskeys that people give you. Sure. Do you ever crave a fancy whiskey to mark special occasions? I really don't. Do you do anything to mark special moments? No, I'm bad at that. Like to, to stop, right. take stock and go, this is special, this is important. Right. Let's mark it somehow. No, I'm very bad at that. Okay. I, I'm not, I think I know why. Why? Because <laughs> when it comes to like work and, and things happening, um, which is a big, it takes up most of my hours in the days. So right. For 20 years, I've been in an industry where I my competition has been brilliant, talented, amazing young people living in their parents' base parents' basement that will do shit for free. Yeah. With this promise of exposure. Yeah. So uh, my professional approach has been very Machiavellian. Right. Like, uh, like just brutal in terms of what I expect for myself. So special occasions. With professional accomplishments, no. Mm. It's like, oh, I can you know toast something or get some more shit done. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to family stuff, my wife is the one that's so into traditions and celebrating and things. celebrations that she takes the front, she takes the wheel, and it's like, yeah, baby, whatever you want to do. So I don't really have any go-to whiskey. See, that's something that I'm I'm good at. Yeah. Marking like this is a moment. We okay. should mark this moment. Yeah, yeah. Is this like, is like there, for, is this a moment? What's the moment? No, no. Right now is not a moment. <laughs> I feel it's like just a moment. drinking whiskey with Rex. I feel like we. Need, right. I feel like we need a hug right now. No, God, no. <laughs> oh, God, so, no. Uh, so, do you have a go-to whiskey though? Is the question. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, but I have two. Yeah. Um, and they changed. This is not like my all-time go-to whiskey. Yeah. The one at my house is a Buna Haben twenty-five. Okay. That was given to be my Michael Drew. Oh yeah, yeah, Michael. Yeah. yeah, and I keep it in my house, and I only pour it mm -hmm. when I think like right now is the time. Now, what's funny is I we have more expensive whiskeys and we have other rarer whiskeys, but there's something about that gift that makes it my this is my whiskey to mark moments with. Oh, okay. In my office, I have a Johnny Walker Gold. Okay. That was given to me by Roy. Oh, so for you, it's less about what's in the bottle, more about the context of how you got the bottle. Yes. Interesting. It was given to me by Roy, and yeah. it was given to Roy by Woody Justice. Oh, uh, Woody Justice. Yeah. When Woody Justice, who was one of Roy's oldest friends and, and first clients, yeah. uh, b would come and hang out, he drank whiskey. Yeah. But Roy didn't. So he bought Johnny Walker Gold, and he kept it at Roy's house. And when Woody died... And I started drinking whiskey here in my office. Right. Roy brought it one day and said, I don't know what to do with this, but you probably do. <laughs> and here's the rule in my office. You can only open that bottle and pour yeah. it if you're willing to talk about an old friend. Yes. Yeah, so that bottle of Johnny Walker Gold in my office is from Woody Justin. Yeah, he was a hell of a guy. Yeah. Hell of a guy. All right, one more here. We got significant proposal. <gasps> proposal, because I just said the thing. Oh, uh, well, we're, that's almost a dad joke. You want to you hug now? No. <laughs> <laughs> My birthday is coming up on Wednesday. What day is it? Is it Wednesday? Whenever this video airs, it might be past that. No, time. no, no. We're like we shot today. We're we shooting this on Wednesday. Wednesday. Happy birthday! Yeah. Okay. And trying to decide whether or not decide on his birthday kung fu. I plan on getting a bottle of Lagavulin 16. So he likes PD whiskey. A little bit Lagavulin 16, but not sure what else I might try to grab. I tried Talisker, Ardbeg, Lafroig. All ten year olds. My oh. favorite of those was Ardbeg. He loved the sweetness and the fruit and the finish. Okay. Uh, but he loved them all. So should I grab a peat monster or maybe an Oogadol? Oogadol. Yeah, that's one of the special edition Ardbegs. Yeah. Um, man, you're right up my territory. And uh, you're not going to be able to get someone. If you can find a Kilomen, branch out into Kilomen. If not, I would say stick to Ardbeg. You obviously already like it. Right. And this is a celebration, not a discovery moment. So reward yourself with something you already know you love. So uh, double down on Ardbeg. I want to know in the comments, what are your go-to special occasion whiskeys? Yeah, Here's... and and are they whiskeys that are special because the whiskey's special or special because of how you got them? Fair enough. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, 
May you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.